Hey developers, today we're going to look at some topics that a lot of people are talking about. We're going to look at statically generated sites, we're going to look at single page applications, and we're also going to look at something called universal JavaScript apps. And we're going to touch on all three of these. And so this is going to give you an exp explanation of these terms and give you an idea, kind of a starting point of where you want to go to explore which one you should use in your application. Before we get too far, let me go and talk about our sponsor. Before we begin, let me thank our sponsor, webdoc.io. Webdoc.io is a VPS hosting solution that uses special Linux containers. Linux containers is a new way of running your virtual machines, and it's much faster than classical virtualization. So webdoc is a new VPS hosting provider, and they use the Linux containers with fast SSD drives to make them much faster than most of their competitors out there. So with WebDoc, you can create your perfect virtualized servers. You can configure it however you want, and they actually give you a free Let's Encrypt SSL certificate too. Another reason you should use WebDoc is that it gives you a lot of free backups that a lot of other providers don't. So please check out webdoc.io. And just for you guys who are watching this video, if you use the coupon code program with Eric, you'll get one free month. So Click on that link below, sign up for it for your one free month. It's awesome and amazing, check it out. So if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a software developer, I'm a full stack developer, I'm also an author of the Vue.js in action book and you can find the link below. And also I put some of my favorite courses below so if you guys are new to web development, check those out as well. Uh, so let's begin here. So I'm gonna define some of these terms and explain some of the differences between them so we're all on the same page. So first, you may have heard of this term called single page app or single page application or sometimes known as client side app. And this is your Vue.js, your React, your Angular, your Ember. So basically a single page application, and this is the definition from Wikipedia, is a web application or website that interacts with the user by dynamically rewriting the current page rather than loading entire new pages from the server. This approach avoids interruption by the user experience between successive pages, making the application behave more like a desktop application. So in other words, when you run a application like Vue.js or Angular or React, the routes and everything are dynamically being done inside the application. So when the application loads from the server, you are connecting to it, and every time you route to a different place inside the app, all the routing is happening inside the application itself. So it kind of behaves like a single application, like a single page. But we've found that over time, this approach has a few problems. And one of which, and a lot of people bring this up, is SEO. Now Google claims that they can still crawl websites that, have, that are JavaScript enabled, um, that are fully JavaScript loaded and booted. Uh, however, there's a lot of concern that there's problems with that. If your initial load times are really slow, then there's, it's not really sure if you can be crawled, all the, crawled correctly. There's also problems with initial time to load. So as you create larger and larger applications, you'll find that you have to download everything into the browser on the initial page load before the application boots. So you can imagine that, on, especially on slower internet connections and mobile, this becomes a problem. Now there's quite a few ways you can fix this and we're gonna talk about a few of them. So possible solutions is universal JavaScript applications, which we'll talk about in a minute, and pre-rendering plugin services and static generated sites. Now this is a pretty small list of solutions if you're thinking about this problem. Obviously there's a hundred things you can do to help especially with low times, um, making smaller applications, code splitting, lazy loading of components, uh, just writing s using less modules. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do to, to actually reduce the amount of time it takes for your application to load, the initial time to load. But I just wanted to talk about some larger solutions right now and discuss for those people who are new what these terms mean. So let's talk about like server side rendering. So when a website connects to a server, HTML is sent back. So this is really what we've been doing forever in the web development world. So every time a website goes out, it goes connects to a server and then an HTML page is sent back. 
And that's really how it was done for many years before the single page application phenomenon happened. So here's a quick illustration that I've done. Um, I pulled these illustrations out of actually um, a few places. but So you have a browser here, and we'll talk about server-side rendering first. So you have your browser on the left-hand side, and then you have the server on the right-hand side. And you can probably see it there. I'm going to move out of the way. But essentially what's happening is when your browser connects to a server, it requests information in HTTP GET, in HTTP PUSH, uh, POST, excuse me, POST, and it returns back like your HTML and JavaScript. And the browser displays the web page immediately, it loads the, the JavaScript loads, everything's fine. That's kind of what server-side rendering does. Now, in client-side rendering, you ask for the web page, the server sends the app over the JavaScript, then the JavaScript app is booted, essentially. It loads into the browser, and at that point, the all the routing and everything is done with inside the browser. It doesn't connect to the server again unless it's doing like an API call. Now you can see here the server-side rendering is has some advantages. Oops, is that it had, could have some advantages because once you send the page over, you're getting the HTML sent back. The browser displays the web page immediately, and this this we're getting a little bit more into what happens here with with SSR. And then you can serve, you can send the JavaScript afterwards, and then the JavaScript loads. So, what is a universal JavaScript application? So that kind of combines the best of both worlds. You get the server-side rendering, plus the single-page application, and you get this universal app. You might have heard of IS, isomorphic app. And then there's services like Next.js and Nux.js that does that. So usually with a universal application, like let's say Nux.js, and by the way, I have a course on Nux.js. If you click on the link below, uh, you can uh, check it out. But basically what happens with Nux.js is that the browser uh, connects to the server. The server then renders the HTML first for the client. So that's really quick. And then it loads the JavaScript or hydrates the JavaScript in the background. That way, the user doesn't have to wait for the page to load um, before they could see something is happening. Now, there is some kind of caveats there if you're loading a lot of uh, if the page will load, but you actually can't interact with the page, that's a problem, and that could be a problem too, still with a universal JavaScript app. Basically, by the time the HTML loads and then the JavaScript loads, you're basically at that point a single page application, and then everything is run on the client side. So basically, everything's run on the server side and the client side after it initially loads. So there is something, uh, one way you can fix the S kind of some of the problems we had with just a normal single page application is doing this pre-rendering. And pre-rendering is a process to preload all elements on the page in preparation for a web crawler to see it. In other words, pre-rendering is basically firing up a headless browser, loading your app's routes, and saving the results to a static HTML file. And then there's a couple ways to do that. There's pre-rendering spa plugin by my friend Chris Fritz, which you could check it out. It's on GitHub. You can add that to your existing projects. It's a uh, Oh, kind of add it to your web pack. And then there's actually whole services that do this, like prerender.io. So this is one way of kind of doing this in a better way. Now, you're probably thinking, well, isn't that what my Vue.js app is doing? And that's not necessarily is, because that's not necessarily how it works. Because with, well, usually when you create a Vue.js app, and let's say you build it, you get an index.html file, you get your JavaScript file and your CSS files and your assets. And then, like I said before, with a client-side app, when you the browser connects to it, it actually loads everything inside. Um, the client connects to the server, the server returns the whole app, and then at that point, the client browser is running the application. Now, if you go to a route, um, connect to a route, let's say you close that tab and you just go to your app slash foo, on the server side, it has rewrite rules and, and server rules that when it, when it sees a route that it doesn't know that exists, because all you have is an index.html file, it basically tells it to go ahead and go back to the application first. 
So in other words, it's, it's basically saying, oh, the server didn't find slash foo, so go and check with the index.html file, and then at that point, the index.html file loads the app again and then routes to the correct place. On the other hand, when you're pre-rendering, you have static HTML files, so your directory structure would look more like five or six HTML files in different folders. That's what you upload to your server, and then your server would, every time you connect to different routes, you're actually loading up a different index.html file. So that can be pretty quick. So obviously with any kind of these things, there is problems. So pre-rendering plugins, so if you have tons of content, you're gonna have like hundreds of index. Uh, hundreds of HTML files, and obviously one change might need to, after you change it, you might have to re-render everything again, depending on what kind of plugin and what kind of, what you set up. Um, User-generated content, because you're using static files, is more difficult to do. Although you can do it. Now there's something kind of taking that one step forward. So rather than using a service or a pre-rendering plugin, you can actually have the a static site generator. And there's a lot of good examples of doing this. Uh, Nux.js actually does is a universal app, but it can also create static sites. So is Gatsby, so is something called Next. So static site generators are tools and frameworks that takes a spa and pre-renders them. The static files can easily be deployed and hosted anywhere. So rather than, like I said, using a plugin, you're actually having a whole sort of framework around it. So they can do a lot of things that uh, these plugins can't do. And it also has certain APIs, it has certain configurations that you have to do, but it does essentially the same thing. So you're probably thinking like, this is a lot of information. Like, I just want to create an app, what do I do? Well, when building a, a spa, you're usually left with an index.html bundle. Well, first, what's the differences? I kind of explained this a little bit before, but a bundle for your JavaScript and CSS, when your app loads, the JavaScript is booted up and the app becomes live. When, S, when a static generated site is created, each route creates its own page and directory if needed. The initial load of the site happens on the first index.html file and only loads in for that one file. So when should I use one or the other? So this is kind of a complicated question. This could be a whole blog post. It could be a whole conference talk of when to use one versus the other. So I'm not going to get into super specifics, but these are my general thoughts on it. So static site site generators are great for informational sites. You actually most of these the S, the static site generators out there are Markdown built into them, like a, a ViewPress, for example, on on Vue.js, I believe Gatsby is marked down right off the site. Portfolio sites, a lot of people, um, for example, it used to be a big trend. Everybody was putting their portfolio sites or their personal sites up on GitHub pages and then uh, using something like Jekyll, which was a static site generator because it was just so simple to get used, uh, to get started and made a lot of sense. Now people are looking at Gatsby and and other like Nuxt, Generate, Next to actually create these sites too. Um, projects like Gatsby has been blurring the lines between everything, but it has a learning curve. So Gatsby is a static site generator, but it also allows, it works with GraphQL. It also has plugins, so it can work. So you can almost create a, like almost a, a dynamic site, even though it's creating a static, it's a static generator. So once again, I would, Maybe if you're just creating a quick portfolio site, I'd look at something like Gatsby or Nux.js to, to create a site and then export it to a static site with Nux Generate or with Gatsby. Um, now, universal apps help solve the initial render problem and still give the flexibility of writing a JavaScript app using your favorite JS framework. Uh, it does help with the, the first load. You do have some times where the, the website will load, but you can actually use everything in it uh, because the JavaScript hasn't loaded. So it's not perfect. You still have to probably think about how you can reduce the bundle size, but it does help with SEO for sure because all your each route will have its own, um, will be rendered on the server when it's first, uh, first loaded. So that really helps. And uh, you can still have all the flexibility of, of, of an application. It's definitely not perfect. But if I was building a really large application, I would definitely look at 
um, you using something like a uh, universal apps with Nuxt or or Next in that case too. Or I would look maybe just using Vue.js, using Create React app, using Vue CLI, and then making sure I add in some of my own configuration and plugins to do uh, pre-rendering or to bring the bundle size down a lot by uh, lazy loading or code splitting or um, tree shaking and making sure that I get the bundle size super low so it loads really, really quickly. So there's a lot of ways of, of solving these problems. Maybe I throw a pre-rendering in there if I care about SEO. Um, pre-rendering might be a great solution for an existing single page application that you would like to make, sh make sure you have a better SEO but has some limitations. So if I had an existing like Angular app or Vue app and I wanted to uh, offer pre-rendering, I might add in a pre-rendering plugin to give that benefit added benefit of SEO. Uh, there's also ideas of um, creating like your site in WordPress and then creating your backend in something completely else. Um, just there's a lot of different ways of doing this. So that was just a quick overview of these terms. I think I could definitely deep dive into each one of them. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Which one do you guys use? What do you think about this? Uh, leave a comment below. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.